Dead Rise Retribution is uh, an action game. It is a third-person shooter game combined with a third-person fighting game. Vice City Cop, Jack Slade. The player is, is following his story, how he discovers a conspiracy and how he's going to fight it. Have you seen the news? Do you know how many times I had to show my ID to get here? Jack, people are looking for you. Yeah, all the wrong people. What the hell happened to you? Where's Shadow? Oh. Here, boy. What have you two been up to? He's always been a poor judge of character. The most important features of, of that to rights are the seamlessly integrated combat system and Shadow. Shadow is obviously a very important partner as an AI body. He is going to fight alongside you at the same time listening to your commands. The seamlessly integrated combat system is something that players have never seen before. We were able to combine the hand-to-hand -hand fighting system and using the gun into the same control system. There are no mini cutscenes, there are no changing camera, no changing control. Everything in any given time is the same. It is not only a reboot of the franchise and a whole new beginning of a series of games, hopefully, but it is also a testing ground for this kind of, of action gaming. Dead to Rights had many hallmark features which really identified the franchise. One of them is uh, the brutal execution move, which we call uh, uh, takedowns. These are uh, context-initiated uh, moves which you, which you can finish an enemy off. They are quite brutal, they are lethal, they are quite bloody, often quite messy. At the same time, I would like to believe that people understand that in this game, violence is there for a reason. It's not violence for violence's sake. Uh, there is a story why and explaining why Jack goes over the edge. No, no, no. Detective Slate, we don't need Vice down here interfering. Yeah, it looks like you need all the help you can get. Where's the negotiator? Where's SWAT? Look, I'm waiting on a cup. Listen, Slate. I'm doing the negotiating. Does a negotiation require a two-way conversation? How many are up there? Do you know? How many hostages? How many hostage takers? Do we have any shooters covering the balcony? Look, we're gonna sit tight and wait for backup. Understand? Oh oh, no, 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 Jesus! No! Oh, Jesus! Fuck, listen. These fuckers don't want to talk in this. Wait's over. Are you gonna make a move or not? We are actually very proud of what we were able to create. We spend an awful lot of time explaining to the voice actors that what is the what is the story arc, what is the environment, describing Grand City, describing the other characters and their uh, emotions to each other, and how what is the journey they go through. Better not pull any cheap punches, Jack. Remember, I'm just an old man. One thing which which might sound obvious to people, but is not necessarily happening in the games industry, that when two people are talking to each other. Uh, putting them at the recording booth at the same time so they can play off each other. We're just gonna keep talking, old man. Are we gonna actually fight? <laughs> Don't be in such a rush to lose some. Oh, to lose. Still talking. That's all I hear. Talking. Similarly, when we recorded um, a motion capturing, we separated out stunt work from acting. Hollywood-based martial artists and stunt actors uh, were giving us the movements for the fighting sequences. We think it was very important that have a specific manager in charge of animations in this game because it's such animation heavy title. We needed someone who, who understands how martial arts work and how those moves work. He is a, a, a martial artist practitioner himself and he was uh, working together with the stunt actors and, and martial artists in, uh, in Hollywood in our uh, motion capturing session. And well, one thing led to another and, and he ended up coming home with a broken rib. It is just really about dedication. When you go into a mock-up session and, and, there, and you look at the data and ah, it's not rough enough, um, again and again and again. And it got rough enough, fair enough. I mean, it was, it was rough enough to break, break him. At the end of the day, uh, obviously, I know it's an extreme example of dedication, but that's what the whole team is trying to do. Really, everyone's putting in all their efforts to make sure that this game is going to fly. <laughs>
working on, on that to rights is was a bit like you know a, a small kid being in a toy shop that that you have all those shiny things around you and, and you just want every single one of them and, and we have to be very cautious about what we do and how we put it into the game because because there are thousands of cool ideas. The seamlessly integrated combat system is something that players have never seen before. Just to give you one very simple example, in a third-person shooter game, you would like to position the character at the side at the bottom of the screen so you can see where you're aiming. In a third-person fighting game, you want to position your character in the middle of the screen so you can have a, a, a 3D space awareness. So we have both, therefore we have to find the camera setting where, where you can see the character, but at the same time you can still aim. That right attribution is using our internal engine, uh, uh, Blitztack. We're quite proud of this engine. It's a very, very strong platform for us. We applied a dynamic lighting uh, to, to the whole game, which means that we do not have any baked-in shadows. That gives a very distinct and very uh, unique look to the game. We decided to go this direction not only uh, because it gives us a lot of toys to play around, because all the moving lights uh, are just, just look funky, but also because the noir style requires a very strong contest of light and shadow. We took a great uh, deal of care when we created the concept art. A good pre-development when you establish a very strong visual style is absolutely essential for any title but especially a game like that right so we were able to create those shots vistas descriptive concepts art which helped later on all of the 3d artists to create the actual immersive universe the best way to describe the gameplay of that to rights is to describe a scene. So you as a player, you step in a room and then suddenly you find yourself surrounded by four guys. You can grab one of the guys in one side, throw him, then you can do a kick to the back so you can do a set of combos and then an execution move. Still you have time to take out your gun, do a hatchet on one of them and set your dog on the last one and listen to him screaming as you walk away. That was four guys, uh, three, four seconds, and you're done. And I think that is that to rise. That kind of, um, I am in control, I can take care of these big guys in a couple of seconds. Shadow is an extremely important part of the game. Shadow adapts his behavior based on the environment and based on how you play as Jack. If you're hiding behind somewhere and the enemy is not aware of you and you press up on an enemy, then, then Shadow is going to try to find a way to sneak to the enemy and, and uh, execute them uh, with a silent kill. If you're doing the same deep head up in the middle of a firefight, then obviously he knows that there is no hiding, he's just going to sprint ahead and try to take out the enemy as fast as he can. The Shadow's trademark a takedown of the enemy, the infamous testicle. kill. The other part of the game where you, where you take direct control, these are the main shadow playable sections, are all about stealth, all about sneaking around, taking enemies uh, out silently. For example, there is a guard, I can bark to draw attention, they can, you know, they check out the noise so I can take them out, drag the body somewhere to, so I can hide them, so the other guard. In that to rights, there, there are it's just hundreds of good bits. Every single time you play, you're going to have a different experience. I personally, and, and we as a team at Volatile Games, we, we definitely learned that you can dream big. You can go for something which people wouldn't expect from you. Death to Right Retribution is the dog's balance.